Texas saw 10 all-time record demands for electricity broken this last summer, and much of this increased demand was met by solar energy. Uh, U.S. manufacturing of solar products has skyrocketed in recent months, largely due to tax incentives that have been put in place by the Inflation Reduction Act. And the second quarter of 2023 has seen nearly a doubling of all of the battery installation storage capacity on the U.S. grid. I'm Jay Warmke with Blue Rock Station, and this is the news from the solar industry for the week of October 1st. All right, so record heat, along with uh, continued population growth within the state of Texas, um, saw demand for electricity hit all-time records on 10 different occasions during the summer months. In fact, on, 10, uh, on 91 days out of the 93 days that were between June 15th and September 15th, solar ended up meeting about over 10% of all of the electrical needs on the Texas grid and averaged around 14%. Now this uh, is even though solar only represents about 4.9% of the installed capacity, the generating capacity on the Texas grid. Now this consistent um, providing of electricity during peak load demand flies in the face of critics of solar energy that claim it's not only not consistent, but it's not reliable. In fact, right now on the Texas grid, wind and solar account for more energy generating capacity than all other forms of energy. Currently, wind and solar combined provide about 34% of the grid's capacity in Texas, with natural gas at about 31%, and coal all the way down to about 20% of the capacity. U.S. solar manufacturing has skyrocketed since the passing of the Inflation Reduction Act. Now, the Inflation Reduction Act gives a 10% uh, additional tax credit if you use domestically produced solar panels, inverters, metal in the systems. And it also provides incentives to manufacturers. Well, 52 new solar manufacturing facilities have announced that they're in the process of opening within the United States since the IRA. This will increase the annual module um, capacity from about 7 gigawatts per year to over 62 gigawatts per year. Now, to give perspective on that, last year the United States installed about 20 gigawatts per year, but it seems that we will need to about triple that installation to meet all of the climate goals, and 62 gigawatts will meet that domestic um, demand. Now, currently, China still dominates solar panel manufacturing with about 80% of the global market share, and they also dominate uh, the wafers, the cells that are generated. That's about 95%, but U.S. capacity for solar cells has increased from about 3 gigawatts to about 35 gigawatts of supply and the wafers from zero to right at around 10 gigawatts. And a report from Wood McKinsey has found that storage capacity on the U.S. grid in the second quarter of 2023 has actually doubled the capacity and we've installed about another 5,500 megawatt hours of storage capacity. Now this represents a 91% growth rate quarter to quarter um, for grid tied um, storage, 79% for commercial and industrial, but only about a 2% growth rate for residential storage. Uh, it's anticipated that the United States will add about 66 gigawatts, which is six times as much as currently exists over the next three years. And Toledo Solar and First Solar have settled a lawsuit. Now, this lawsuit stemmed uh, from an incident where uh, in 2004, GEO, Green Energy Ohio, some volunteers installed um, First Solar solar panels on the governor's mansion in Columbus, Ohio. Well, last year they were replaced with Toledo solar panels. And a technician from First Solar went to get the old panels to take them back, recycle them found that the new panels were not Toledo solar panels, but were actually first solar 
um, solar panels that where they had changed the labels and and they had changed the serial numbers. So a lawsuit ensued where um, First Solar sued Toledo Solar, and in July, pretty much the entire management team of Toledo Solar was was uh, fired. And in fact, uh, the, while the settlement has not been disclosed, Toledo Solar essentially issued a statement saying we appreciate. First Solar's understanding and quick resolution to this matter stemming from the unfortunate actions taken by the company's prior management team. And I'm sure they heard a bus go by as, as that was said. Anyway, new a study from the conservative Texas Texans for Energy Innovations have found that home prices near solar farms are unaffected. Essentially what they did is they studied uh, home prices from those homes that were for sale near solar farms and then compared them with uh, um, how similar houses from further away. They looked at some parameters such as square foot, price per square foot, um, the sales to price listing ratios, as well as days on the market, and essentially found there was no, no difference. Now, compared to another study from Lawrence Berkeley Labs, uh, they studied a number of um, solar farms and housing prices associated in four different states. And they did find a slight difference. They found about a one and a half percent lower cost of housing that was near uh, solar farms. A lot of this had to do with what was there before the solar farm was um, installed. If it was industrial in nature, then there was no price difference. But if it was um, farmland, then there was a price difference. And that's the news from the solar industry for this week. We'll see you next week.